Radiators. Radiators are quite a big topic related to refrigerators, cars and radiation. So today we will talk about the structure of radiators in cars, why they are so important and also check and practice how long a car can live without a radiator. I hope you will enjoy the video, let's get started. Let's start briefly with the main characteristics of the radiator. The radiator is not only in cars, I hope you knew that. Heating systems in houses also use radiators. So what is a radiator? In general it is a device for dissipating heat. Usually somewhere in the middle of the radiator there is a water which can be hot or cold as needed. Instead of water other liquids that conduct heat well can be used. For example, cars use antifreeze or more effective cooling. That is, in general, a radiator is a device that can disperse or radiate heat around itself. I will talk about the structure and principle of action a little later, but now let's talk about the history of the invention of radiators in general and when it was first used in cars. So, the history. It is interesting that the radiator principle was first used almost 2000 years ago in the Roman Empire for heating houses. Hot gases from the furnace were passed through the floor and walls in the houses, thereby heating them. And the floor and walls radiated this heat into the room under the effect of a radiator. That is, Roman engineers were first to use one special room and a network of channels instead of building a furnace for each separate room. But when the first radiator was created? It was created in 1955. It used heated water for heating the premises and was made of cast iron. Later, in 1930s, this invention was improved, a tubular Zechner radiator was invented, which had better heat transfer and was made of steel. That is, in general, we figured out where the radiator came from. But when was it first used in a car? In general, this need arose when cars became more and more powerful, which means that engines need cooling. And for the first time the radiator was used on a Mercedes-Benz 35 horsepower. Yes, its horsepower was used in the name of the car. The radiator on it was the simplest, but with the passage of time and the increase in power, new technologies and other cooling liquids are being used. Let's now understand the structure of the radiator. The main task of the radiator is to cool the engine. The radiator itself is in front, it is located directly behind the radiator grill. This radiator is a system of a grid and tubes in the middle of it. The liquid flowing through these tubes is cooled by the air flow from the movement of the car. Then the cooled liquid flows through the tubes around the engine, thereby cooling the engine but heating up again. Then it again enters the radiator, it cools and the cycle repeats. But what if the car does not move at a sufficient speed for the air flow to cool the liquid in the radiator? For this a fan is installed in some cars, which starts spinning and directs the flow of air through the radiator. By the way, the liquid in the radiator is called antifreeze. It is used not only to cool the engine, but also to warm it up faster because it is very very harmful for an unheated engine to work. I think you have understood the basic principle of operation of radiator in the car. And now let's do an experiment. How long car can drive without a radiator? And what will cause its failure? And yes, I saw this idea of experiment in movies channel. I really like this experiment and I hope you won't judge me for repeating it. I can only say that of course I reworked it in my own way. I conducted this experiment in two parts. The first time I simply removed the radiator from the car and with the traffic turned on, 
which I later regretted very much. I tried to drive a specific distance, about 10 km. The road went through the mountains, that is, the car was constantly moving either uphill or downhill. Well, we start to go. I will tell you what my driving tactics were. I considered my main task to maintain the lowest possible revolutions. That is, as soon as I could, I switched it to a higher gear and drove at approximately 2000 revolutions per minute. Secondly, I did not turn off the engine, because firstly, the brakes and steering wheel use hydraulic amplifiers that work at the expense of the engine, that is, with the engine turned off, I will lose control over the car. And also, in my opinion, I can lose part of my speed when I roll down, because I don't have time to turn on the engine in time to maintain my speed. When I was rolling cars downhill, I simply put either neutral gear or fully press the clutch, which gave me the lowest possible engine revolutions, and at the same time, I didn't brake. Because when the car rolls downhill in gear, everything works in the other direction, and the wheels start turning the engine, which is rather a difficult process, and the car may simply stop. So, after calculating all this for a normal drive-in, without modifications to the car, I started driving. Let's go through the results of the first part of the experiment. I was able to drive the car without a radiator for half an hour, and I think I could have driven even further if I hadn't crashed the car. At the end of the journey, the temperature of the engine block was 130 degrees Celsius which is already a critical temperature. Now let's conduct another experiment, only now I have modified the car specifically for this race. What modifications did I make to the car? Well, first is a standard 6-cylinder engine with the smallest capacity, so that the temperature does not increase too quickly but also so that the engine block is large enough to absorb a large amount of heat. Next, I installed a more efficient gearbox. Later, my task became to reduce the weight of the car as much as possible. And also to open the engine to the surrounding air. That's why I removed the bumper and hood. I cleaned the interior of the car, installed lighter wheels, and because all of this, the car was lighter in weight by up to 300 kg. Also, an important part was that I left the standard exhaust system. I think it was a mistake that Movie removed the exhaust system in his video, because it will also dissipate a lot of heat, especially in the muffler, because it is filled with the basal fiber, which absorbs noise and engine temperature. Now let's start our experiment and see how long I can drive this car. And what can really happen to the engine if it lacks a radiator? As if the answer is obvious, very strong overheating. But what will happen to the engine because of this? What will break? A missing radiator can seriously damage your car for several reasons. First of all, overheating can cause serious damage to engine components such as a cylinder head, head gasket and cylinder block. Also, the absence of a radiator can lead to deformation and damage to components. High temperature can cause metal parts of the engine to expand, which can cause them to deform or even crack. This can seriously damage the internal components of the engine and make it unfit for further use. Damage to gaskets and seals is still possible. Many gaskets and seals in the engine are made of materials that cannot withstand with high temperatures. Overheating can lead to their destruction, which in turn can cause leaks of oil, coolant and other fluids. That is, the absence of a radiator literally destroys the main organ of the car, the engine. That is, it kills the car itself. An interesting fact is that I drove the car with one hand during this entire race. This car was already able to drive much longer and much more confidently. It was easier to enter the mountains on it 
and later when descending from them it was easier to control. All this gave it a good advance and it was able to drive for 45 minutes. And at that time I did not particularly pay attention to the number of engine revolutions. Now I raised them up to 3000 if it was necessary. Generally speaking, I think the main role here was played by the weight of the car and how much the engine was open for cooling. Well, that's basically all. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new for yourself. Click on that subscribe button and like button if you haven't done so yet. Thank you again for watching and see you soon.